Social media can have its positives like connecting us to friends and family from all over the world. Research shows we do need a break from it sometimes, and many apps are now dedicated to help us do just that disconnect after a certain amount of time. To talk to us more about a balanced digital life is Georgie Powell. She's the digital well-being expert and VP of partnerships and strategy for the app Freedom, which is the leading distraction blocker and works with organizations, individuals and families to develop healthy relationships with technology. I appreciate you joining us. Absolutely. Pleasure to be here. Thanks for having me. Yeah. So off the top, why is it so hard for us to escape social media? What What is going on here that makes it difficult? Well, as you say, social media has a lot of value and actually it plays to a lot of our human needs to be connected, to feel informed, um, to form communities. And uh, and so it kind of it's very natural that we want to use them to try and, and, and stay connected to one another. The beyond meeting these kind of human needs, the apps are also really cleverly designed to keep us hooked mm -hmm. and they use mechanisms which um, are actually not dissimilar to gambling in many ways to hook us into using the product and then to keep us there for as long as possible. I mean, the fact that you're even uh, attributing it or something that's similar to gambling is is like, wow. Uh, what are some of those techniques that are used to keep us, you know, interacting? Are there certain things that you see consistently? Yeah, so I think one thing that's really interesting is this idea of variable reward. So just as if you pull a fruit, a fruit machine, you don't know what output you're going to get. Right. That same kind of sensation when you scroll on social media or when you go, you get a notification and you go to pick up, pick up your notification, see what's waiting for you. You're never really sure what's going to be there. And it could be something that's really socially validating and makes you feel really good. Um, but it also could be something that doesn't leave you feeling great yeah. and, and just not knowing what's going to be there um, triggers a chemical reaction in our brain and releases a chemical called dopamine um, which is the same thing that happens when you're gambling and that's a happy hormone it's really relaxing um, it's kind of a pleasant state to be in and um, and, and that's one of the mechanisms then that sort of variable reward not knowing what's coming mm -hmm. and the chemical reaction that it triggers that keeps us hooked and keeps us scrolling for longer. Well you know keeping in mind that we do get those dopamine hits which we've heard you know so far throughout our hour about with that in mind, why is it valuable to then create habits and disciplines when it comes to social media? I mean, if it's if you're feeling that good, why discipline yourself? <laughs> it's funny, isn't it? It's like when you eat a bar of chocolate, it sort of feels good in the moment. Yeah. yeah. But then afterwards, you can just be left feeling pretty rubbish. You pay rubbish for it later. Happens. Yeah. Yeah, because exactly what happens is the dopamine levels kind of reset and it's okay. a bit like a seesaw and yeah. um, you kind of drop off the other side. And I think a lot of us have felt that as well when we've sat Maybe you just wanted to check one thing on your phone and before you know it, you're lost down the rabbit hole, you've wasted 20 minutes and um, you're kind of left at the end of it feeling a bit meh, mm -hmm. I think is the best way to describe it. Yeah. Uh, certainly not how you had intended to feel. And so the great thing about boundaries or, or tools that can help us to put in place boundaries for us is that it takes away a lot of the choice that we have to apply ourselves to step away. And it actually kind of just says, you don't have to make the decision in this moment. The decision has been made for you. Mm -hmm. um, there is no more chocolate left in the cupboard to eat, for instance. Uh, your, your time is up. Like, it's time, it's time to take a break. And it just helps people to regulate how much they're actually using social media so that they can kind of keep healthier balance, basically. Well, I mean, you bring up how much. What is a healthy amount of social media use? Look, it's so personal and actually when we talk about social media there's so many different types of platforms these days they're all doing different things and people are using and inter interacting with them in very different ways um and then we all have very different personality types we're different ages um and so there really isn't a one-size-fits-all recommendation for how much social media we should be using i know personally for instance if i was to spend a lot of time on instagram i would actually find that quite a negative experience mm. and that wouldn't be something that made me feel good it wouldn't be it wouldn't be how i wanted to live my life whereas my hubby can quite happily sit and scroll facebook and whilst he might be wasting time it's not going to leave him at the end of him end of it feeling drained like it does with me mm -hmm. so i think what a healthy balance with social media is is really about understanding what are you actually trying to achieve by using these platforms and and then questioning are you actually getting it and what else are you getting as well hmm. and being able to kind of understand the pros and cons and really critically assessing am i in control of how i'm using these products and am i getting the best from them are these really bringing the best to my life yeah and um just like you would think about managing a healthy diet or um kind of healthy exercise routine just being conscious of how we let these products be an important part of our life but one that is managed in a conscious way
when you brought up having kind of those boundaries in place and, you know, that's the cutoff so you don't even have to think about it, there are dozens of companies that are releasing apps and, you know, to help us balance our digital lives better and even Instagram, uh, the, the culprit, if you will, says it encourages us to think more about how much time we spend on the app with its take a break feature, which reminds you to take a break after 10, 20 or 30 minutes. So my question is, I mean, do we as humans not have enough self-control that we need the same app that keeps us logged on to tell us to get off? Jury's out on that. And there's actually quite a rigorous debate going on about the extent to which we really are in control of how we use our technology. Um, I would say that um, we're in really early stage of these technology products being developed and already they're incredibly pervasive and they're incredibly enticing and a lot of us are spending more time than we intended using them every single day. Um, and so I would say, deducing from that, no, we're not in control. Okay. <laughs> Lots of us have developed habits which are in, uh, you know, impacting our relationships, impacting our sleep, impacting our ability to focus and concentrate at work. Um, I talk often about the importance of being able to do things like be bored and just mm. let your mind wander and have creative moments and we're losing, we're losing that. Yeah. And so, no, I don't think at the moment that all of us are able to self-regulate. And so I think it is important that we look at different mechanisms, different types of tools or boundaries or methods to put in place to help us to sort of put the guardrails back on and, re and reclaim some of that control over how we use technology. What can we do now to really escape from social media and, and take that break so that we can see what's in front of us, you know, what's going on in our real life? Yeah, so the first, the first step is just to be really brutally honest with yourself. Um, you're not going to change your behavior until you get to a point that you really recognize that you do want to change. And so sit down, critically assess how much time are you actually spending on social media apps. You can use your phone trackers to do that. That's automatically on every device. Now you can track how much time you're spending on apps, but also how it's making you feel and how it might be affecting different parts of your relationships. And then put in place important strategies to change your habits. And that might be taking program breaks, putting in place boundaries around things like no phones in the bedroom, no phones at the dinner table, and just trying to step away as much as possible. And, and remember what life is like when you're not constantly on social media. Yeah, just like this. Georgie Powell, thank you so much for joining the Y. We appreciate it. Pleasure. Thanks so much for having me.